Recording is on. Cool. Okay, so we go. <laughs> um, so just um, to talk a bit about me and why I'm delivering this session. So I'm working with the Open Food Network, supporting um, hubs with their marketing. And my kind of background is in marketing sustainable food. So I've done that with lots of different types of companies. So I was international brand manager with Pucker Herbs, the tea company, for a number of years. Um, and I've worked with charities, publishers, and have about a bit over 10 years experience with marketing and sales over the years. Um, and yeah, so I've been working with OFN um, to help food hubs with their marketing. So I'm also kind of not just doing webinars, but I'm also on calls. So if you have any marketing questions, just generally, please throw them my way and I'll support where I can. Um, you can find me, are you, is, is, it, is everyone here part of the Facebook hub, the marketing hub on Facebook? Okay, cool. Because I'm easy to access there. Just drop me, drop me a line or drop a post. And yeah, if there's anything that I can help with, I will. Um, and yeah, so today's topic is Mailchimp. I'm going to share some slides now, and I'm going to walk through a presentation that I hope I always find sometimes when I'm going through. Personally, if I'm watching slides, I can get a bit kind of like slides can be a bit boring. So I hope that these are, and, and I'll try and make it again as interactive as possible to so jump in with any questions. So I'm sharing my screen and I'm gonna to go to some slides that I made for this session. Um, is everything okay? Can you see my screen? Yep. Excellent. Okay, cool. So this is a mass champ, um, a mass class on MailChimp. And by mass class, I really should say that this is a kind of a beginner session. And I'm going to go from the basics of setting up an account all the way through to setting an email, but with lots of stuff in between that even if you're a regular MailChimp user, you might not know or do. So some things around GDPR, for example, that I'm going to bring up here, um, and some automation stuff that even though it's beginner level, it's something that, you know, I worked with a charity and they hadn't actually set up the GDPR um, thing, for example. So it might be something that just double check that that's already set up on your account. But anyway, more of this as we go through. So I just want to, first of all, talk about why it's so important to do email marketing. And if it feels like effort getting to learn new programs and, and do it, I just want to explain here why it's so worth that extra effort. And one of the reasons why it's really important to get email marketing right is because it's simply the best way to stay in contact with your customers and to reach your customers. An email message is five times more likely to be seen than a post on Facebook. And it's also 90% and also 90 of emails arrive in your customer's inbox. And this is in comparison to about 2% um, of Facebook posts, which will actually get in front of your customer. So it's a much more certain way of reaching your customers. And this is to do with the algorithm on, not just on Facebook, but all social media platforms where um, essentially social media platforms control what posts their users see. So whatever you post there gets ranked and delivered in the order that the user is likely to enjoy them. So they only actually see what's most relevant to them. And this means that a lot of the time what you're posting on social media isn't actually seen by the audience. Whereas email, um, you're a lot more likely to get in front of the people that you want to reach. And also there's other um, benefits. So there's been a lot of research around the efficacy of email marketing. And it shows that email has a 66% higher conversion rate for purchases versus social. So this means that if you send an email reminder for your order cycle to your customers, for example, they're 66% more likely to respond to this with a purchase with you in comparison to a social post reminding people about your order cycle. So it's quite a bit, a bit higher chance for them to actually take action when, when, you've, when you've reached them. And also it's a really great space for, yeah, taking customers on that journey from just knowing about you through to being a customer. And yeah, and studies show that it's about 40 times um, better for customer acquisition than Twitter or Facebook. So that means that if you're trying to reach new customers on Facebook, if you're reaching them via email, um, it's, it's, it's a lot more effective. So now I've talked about why spend this time to get to learn um, a new program like MailChimp. I'm going to talk about why MailChimp and um, why not use some other um, email platform. 
So the main reason why is because it's really easy to use and it's really intuitive. So it's simply, I've, I've tried lots of different ones and it really is the easiest one to get started with. And also the other main benefit, um, particularly for us, is that MailChimp is the only email marketing program that has a forever free plan. So you can have up to 2,000 subscribers and not have to pay um, anything to use MailChimp. And you still get almost all of their um, all of their different functions. So it's, for this reason, it's 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 a really good yeah. start. To email marketing. So the other thing, um, the other reason why I use Mailchimp is it's really easy. Um, it's a really easy way to ensure you have GDPR compliance. So I'll come to a bit more on this later. So okay, I'm going to run through here how to get started and. This is literally going to the basics of setting up an account. So I'll run through it quite quickly because it sounds like at least one of you already have ha, has an account. So, okay. So you go to the main page, mailchimp.com, sign up for free. And I'm going to do this with just my generic email. And I'm going to change that to an at sign. <laughs> and then choose username and it can be anything so I'm going to just call mine Kayuri and password I'm just going to use some standard password and then password is secure and you're all set please wait so it should only take a second so it's really that simple um just follow the login instruct follow the setup in your account instructions follow this and I'm just going to walk through it because sometimes different things pop up um and just check that everyone's comfortable with how to set up a new account. Almost certainly me. <laughs> so I'm going to put 2020. Uh, cool. So then you'll get sent to your email a confirmation email. So you just Click, go to that email, go to whatever your email account provider is, look at the email and then activate account. And then that just gets your account all sorted and set up. So there'll be a few little things that you step through, but they're really intuitive. So you just follow the instructions as you go. And then choose the free plan. I just went. And then once you've chosen the free plan, complete. And then add all your extra details. So I'm going to put here, Hayley, hey, that's my business. And you don't have to have your URL. You don't have to give your phone number either. Um, and then you can continue. So it's, again, super simple. Because of the law um, with regards to, so yeah, um, it's just kind of tied to GDPR so that your email setting account is trace, traceable to you. Um, it's, it's a rule so that you, that you comply with international and spam laws. So you're gonna have to put in a personal address here, but you can also put a business address. So I'm just gonna put in my here. And then if you're just starting, you don't have any contacts, just say no, continue. And you can add these later. So you can give a little bit of diff information about your so about your company. So for example, if you're selling food, you could say physical goods, continue. And a little bit about how your store is set up. So it could be physical store, for example, and then you're ready to go. And then you don't have to subscribe to any of these. And you should now have a bright, shiny new MailChimp account that's ready to go. So I'm gonna go back to the slides which are here and we'll just continue with these. So once you've got started and you've made an account, the next thing to consider is making your account help you be GDPR compliant. So I'm just gonna explain a bit about what GDPR is. I talked about it a little bit in a previous webinar, but here's a general summary. So. GDPR is a set of data protection rules for the collection and the processing of the personal information for people who live in the EU. So it's really important to be aware of these rules and to comply, especially with regards to safely handling people's data. 
And this is because since these rules have come into place, there are some consequences if you fall foul of GDPR rules. But there's also with these rules, there's a bit more leniency um, by the ICO in relation to any non-compliance for small businesses. So they tend to be a little bit more lenient with small businesses around this, but it's really good to at least stay on the right side of these four rules that I've pointed out here. And that's that you only collect data, and by data, that's an email address, that can be an email, an email address or a name and a name. So only collect data for a specific purpose and don't use it for any other purpose. But that's fairly easy to do if you're just collecting a name and email address to email people, that's a specific purpose and it's unlikely by not using it for any other purpose. It could be, for example, if you're selling people's email addresses to someone else so or something like this. So it's quite easy to stay on the right side of that rule. Also, make sure you have consent to use this data for this purpose and make it easy for people to withdraw consent. So that means that essentially you want to have your customer's consent that you can email them. And also one of the good things that MailChimp does is it makes it really easy for people to withdraw consent by simply unsubscribing from your emails. So it's another reason why it's good to use MailChimp as opposed to just sending general emails because MailChimp covers that for you. And another thing to think about here is that if you are emailing an existing or previous customer, you have what's called implied consent. So even though they might not have said, I consent to receiving marketing emails from you, by being a previous customer, they've, there's an implied consent there that they're okay to receive emails from you. So this is just a little something to consider if you want to email your customers to ask them to sign up for your mailing list this is a really low risk um, activity with regards to GD coming on the wrong side of GDPR. The other rule is only hold the minimum amount of data necessary for the consented tasks and only keep it for as long as necessary to complete the task. So that again will be easy to on the right side of. It's just, for example, if you just wanna send um, promotional emails to people, then you only really need their, their name and their email address and for example, you wouldn't need to ask them any other personal questions, um, particularly sensitive data around gender, for example. Um, so it's just making sure that the kind of data that you're collecting is really relevant for what you want to do with the data. And the final part, which is some, something to always keep in mind, is to keep the data you're storing safe. And that's another way that if you're storing your email list on MailChimp, MailChimp has a really good security so it just keeps that data safe and if you're keeping your email contact data on say a spreadsheet on your computer just make sure your computer is password protected so this all sounds quite dramatic but it's just good as long as you follow those rules then it's very likely that you're still on the right side of this and it's unlikely that you'd have any problems with this so and i'm going to walk you through the steps of how to set it up gdpr with your mailchimp and I'm going to show you, and I'm, I'm also going to share these slides. So this has like a walkthrough of how to do it later. But I think by, by watching someone do it first, it always makes it a little bit easier later when you're coming to do it yourselves. So what you want to do, first of all, is I'm going to go back to my new MailChimp account. I'm going to save my password. And, oh, it's not this one. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is go to audience here. So this is your home screen. If your home screen doesn't look like this and you're trying to do this activity, if you just click on the MailChimp, <laughs> then it will always take you back to this screen. So I'm going to call this for now and I'm going to go straight in to audience and I'm going to click on manage audience. audience dashboard and then when I'm on this when I've clicked on audience and I've gone to the audience dashboard I want to go to manage audience here and I want to choose settings tell me if I'm going too fast by the way um, so once I've gone to settings it looks like this and then you want to scroll down to GDPR fields and settings so I'm going to click on this and then here the important part here is to tick this box 
enable GDPR fields on sign-up forms. So I'm just going to explain what this does. And this means that when we create a sign-up form later, um, it will always have a GDPR form on it. So essentially, whenever someone subscribes to your email list, they have to tick a box to agree to be emailed by you. And it sounds like something that would happen automatically, but it doesn't. And that's because one of MailChimp's main customer bases is in the US. And in the US, the GDPR rule doesn't apply within the US. It does apply to a US company who wants to contact um, customers in Europe. Um, but it, so it doesn't happen automatically. It's something you actually have to set up yourself. And this is one of the things that even if um, a company has been using MailChimp for a while, they might not have actually taken these actions. So it's a good thing to check, um, particularly if you've just taken on your um, enterprise's MailChimp account, just double check if this is set up for them. So here you can title it whatever you like. I usually keep it um, the same as what MailChimp suggests, so marketing permissions. So in the description, you can leave it how they say, but you can also give a little bit more information here for your customers. So you could say, for example, please support us by allowing us to keep in touch with you. And then you can also put a bit more information here as well, like we will only use your email to let you know about new products, to offer useful information and send you a reminder when your order cycle is open or about to close so you don't miss it. Please select how you would like to hear from us. So for example here, I might, um, we will send you useful order cycle reminders and information about new products and offers please please click below if you would like to hear from us So this is this will then be shown to any customer that is signing up to your mailing list. So it's like a nice way, a softer way to ask them to join. And then here you can choose what this is saying is this will show up on the sign up form like a tick box. So by keeping this on this list, it, like by keeping this on the list, it means that there's um, uh, sorry, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback. Um I stopped, it's okay. So on this bit, on marketing references, that means that your customers will be able to click on how they want to hear from you. So for our purposes, I'm going to get rid of, you can delete these. So I'm gonna delete direct mail, because that means post, and I'm gonna delete customized online advertising, because that means that they're happy to receive adverts from you. And I'm just gonna leave it as email and keep it really simple. And that means that when your customers see the form, they just have to tick email to say they want to hear from you. Then I'm gonna click on this to require at least one option to be selected. And then here's the legal text. Um, I'd leave this the same. And then you just click save GDPR settings. And so then this will be set up automatically for you. And you're gonna see later in this process what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna go back to my home screen here by clicking on the MailChimp guy. And I'm gonna go back to my slides and go on to the next topic. So the next thing that we're going to do is create a landing page. So this is also something that you may or may not have if you've inherited um, a MailChimp account for, um, and you're taking it over. So it's good to check and see if you've got one already. So if we go back to MailChimp, so the way like here, is if you go to, so first of all, you can check and see if you've got any landing pages um, here. And also if you want to create a new one, you can click on create and then you can go here to landing page. So what a landing page is, is it's a page that's hosted on the internet that MailChimp hosts for you, which you have a link which you can give to people or you can put in an email or you can put on your social media that your customers can click on to take you through to a page where you can collect their email address and also check that it's GDPR compliant. 
So if we click on landing page, I'm going to make a really simple one. You'll get this option box, and I'm going to call it Pay Read Sign Up. And this box is where you select your audience. So I'm going to select Kaylee Reed, and you should only have one audience if you've got a free account with MailChimp. So this will be a really easy option for you. So if you just select your audience, this won't create or send anything to your existing audience, but what it means is when a new contact, um, stop me as well if any of this doesn't make sense um, or ask me to explain more. If you, if you click on the audience that you have, what this means is that any new contact who is who subscribed via your landing page will be added to your existing audience list. So I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to click begin. Okay, so here, I'm just going to accept this. So here is where you can see a list of different templates that you can use for your landing page. So you can click a pre-designed one by MailChimp. And I think these are the free ones. Some of them you need to upgrade, but these all look free. So you can pick any style of landing page. I'm gonna pick, go down and I'm just gonna pick a really simple one, grow your list. And that's just kind of just what it says on the tin really. And I'm gonna click on this and it will take me to the landing page builder. So if you sent an edited um, newsletter, then you've probably seen this page before. And if this is your first time with MailChimp, don't be dissuaded. It's so intuitive and it's a lot easier than it first looks. There's just a couple of things here to just keep in mind. One is that this section here is how the email looks and this is where you make edits to it. So you don't actually type or change anything in here, you do it here. And you do that by say if we click here on the logo box, you see how it just popped up on the side? So this is then where you would edit the logo that appears here. So if I put here the default logo, and I'm going to replace, and it will take me to an add files page. So I'm going to click on this to upload some files, and I'm just going to add some random stuff. So it's going to be a very funny landing page, but um, so I always have weird images on my computer because of doing slides and stuff. So um, I'm going to do maybe. What should I do? I'll do this nice tree. I'm going to upload a few at once. So if you've got a logo and other images that you want to use, you can upload them all at once or one at a time. Just for these purposes, I'm going to upload them um, all at once. And I'm just going to pick a few. So it's going to be a very funny looking page, but I think it will be. And some peas. Why not? Cool. So that means that all of these images will be uploaded and they'll be stored in MailChimp for you to use time and time again. So then now I've uploaded the images I want to use, I'm going to choose one of these which I want to use for the logo. So I'm going to choose this rather strange looking emoji brain and I'm going to insert it here. So here's the image. When, As you can see when it first comes up it's huge and we want to make this a bit smaller so it doesn't dominate the whole space. So this could be your logo if you've got one, or it could be a picture of if you've got a hero piece of produce that you want to show off that week. Um, if you don't have a logo, if you do have a logo, I'd always recommend putting it here so that your customers know who the email's from. Then you want to put a big headline here for your email, uh, um, for your landing page, sorry. So I'm going to it probably wouldn't be what I'd normally write, but I'm just going to put please join our mailing list with an exclamation mark. And then I'm going to click into this, click on, when you click on these boxes, it opens it up on the left to edit it. So here, you can actually also change the size. So maybe if we make this really, really big, um, like, 41 for example and you can also change the font so you might want to make it like a different type of font um so it's totally up to you but this is where you would edit it if you want to and you can change you can change the color here as well so it's quite similar probably to other things that you've that you've used so you can also change these boxes here change the background so you could if you want use one of your images 
or you could just change the color. So we could change the color to pink, for example, or we could choose an image which we've uploaded. And maybe we choose this image, for example, or even the tree. So we just do one at a time and then insert here. And then you'll see the tree is in the background. So this might be a nice thing to do if you've got a really good photo of, say, for example, the veg contents of a veg box or um, some like a, a gorgeous collection of vegetables. It might be a nice thing to have in the background. Um, and here, Lucky Mailchimp kind of gives you some nice guidelines as you're doing this. So you can use this space to tell people what they're signing up for. So it's similar things to maybe what we put earlier. So it could be, for example, join our mailing list to receive the latest news updates on new seasonal produce and um, any offers. Yeah. Offers or uh, latest news. Thank you for your support. You can put anything you like here. Again, if you want to edit this and say make it center aligned, you can. And so then if you click here, you've got email address. So when you get to this point, you want to add. So if you click on this part, you'll see here that you get a list of different things that you can ask for. I would keep this as short as possible because the more things you ask from people, like the, the less likely they are to subscribe. So you really want to only choose one or two things. So for example, I think choosing an email address and a first name is probably enough because you really won't need um, the rest of these things. It, I think it's, you probably feel like it would be nice to have more data than you really need for your mailing list. But don't forget, you also have the relationship with your customers through their orders where you have their name and address, etc. So probably just for this, I'd keep it really short and sweet. And then save and close. And this is where now I can explain what we just did with the GDPR um, preferences. So if you haven't done what we just did, this whole section wouldn't show up on this page. But because we just set up GDPR preferences, it means that now you have this extra addition here, which helps you to become GDPR compliant because your customers will see this box. So here, please support us by allowing us to keep in touch. The, the note that we left, they have to click on email to say that they're happy to receive information from you via email to join your mailing list. So this counts as a permission, which, which means you're totally free to email, these, email this person. And also, yeah, this little bit here is the legal bit that helps people to make the choice whether they want to subscribe or not, and then they can subscribe. So this is not the most epically designed landing page, but it's a landing page that would work. So I'm gonna show you what we do next. So I'm gonna save and close it. And now we go to this page, which gives you a summary of the page details. So that means here, this was the audience, and it means that all contacts that come to you via this page will be added to the audience, which I've called Katie Lee, but it'll be your main audience. And then here, after sign up, form is submitted, they'll see a confirmation message, which you can also edit. So that's, um, for example, we could, where is that there? Okay, cool. So that's the full. If you want to make any more changes, you can make it to that page. The automatic um, confirmation page is just the same page really that just has a confirmation. We're going to talk later about how to set up an automated thank you for joining, like welcome or thank you for joining the mailing list email which is also a really good thing to do. And it's unlikely that it's, it's possible that's not set up on your account already. So once that's done, this is the important, this is a really important bit here. So you've got a URL here. This link then takes people 
to that landing page. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm gonna click here, publish, and that publishes the landing page. So you can view your landing page by clicking here, but also the reason why we copied the address is you can copy and paste it here and then press enter and it will take us to a live version of your landing page. So this is the page that you want potential customers or your supporters to go to, to gain their email address, name, and also to gain the GDPR permission for them to join. And then this automatically then populates your um, audience on MailChimp. So is everything that I've covered so far fairly clear? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the slides. And now we've created a landing page. I'm gonna move on and just go for some landing page tips, which I definitely didn't cover when I just made one, but I'm gonna go through them here anyway. So when you're creating a landing page, the first thing you wanna consider is who are you creating the landing page for? Is it for new customers who have just brought from you for the first time? Or is it from customers who have been shopping with you for a while who haven't joined your mailing list yet? Or is this the totally new potential customers who have never shopped with you? And the reason why you wanna think about this is because the way you write your landing page will be different for each of this, these audiences. So as an example, if this is for customers who have brought from you before and you just wanna capture their email addresses so that you can send them your newsletter, for example, or an order cycle reminder, you can lead with a more kind of heartfelt thank you message. Something like, hello and a big thank you for shopping with us. We really appreciate your support so far and also for your support of the amazing local producers in our community. It would mean so much to us if you joined our email list, um, if you joined our mailing list so that we can keep in touch with you about our latest news, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just changing the landing page depending on who you're hoping to, to gain. This could be then, the reason why this is important is that if you were doing, if you wanted to email all of your current customers and ask them to join your emailing list. So if you've got customer, new customers, for example, that you have just bought with you and you know they're not on your mailing list, you could email them and ask them in this way to join your, ask them to join your mailing list with a link to a landing page with a much softer, kind of big, a nice thank you message, and please join our mailing list. If it's for new customers, it could be something that you post on Facebook, um, where you might, you might actually wanna create a separate landing page with a different message for new customers. So it wouldn't be a, um, a thank you for your support so far. It might be more, um, a thank you for your interest in our hub, um, join here for the latest news and offers, that kind of thing. So. It's just having a think about who you're talking to first. Okay, and the next thing to consider is just as much as you can use great images. So when you're putting images on your landing page, you want it to be nice and eye-catching. So if you're considering the images you've got, try and choose quite, quite bright and vibrant ones that use a lot of color, um, make sure they're in focus, that kind of thing. So it's just, be quite discerning with the images that you use. Like if it's your logo, make sure you choose a version of the logo that isn't really pixelated. And it's just having that kind of sense check that the images look really good. And also it's a nice place to add an extra box, for example, to include a review or a testimonial. And this is quite a nice thing to put on a landing page, particularly if you're targeting new customers. So if this is, um, a landing page that you're posting on Facebook to try and gain new customers to join the, the, the list, then you might want to put a customer testimonial on the landing page. And the reason why this is nice is because it acts as social proof. 85% um, of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations from family and friends. So having like a, a really nice testimonial that you might have received via an email, like um, it is a really nice way to kind of encourage new cust potential customers to join your mailing list and then potentially to buy from you. Uh, so it's just a way to make your landing page look, work a little bit harder for you. And the last thing is to follow up. Um, 
And that means that when someone signs up, you send them a welcome email to introduce yourself or your hub and to say thank you for signing up. So in MailChimp, you can use an automation to make sure that each new sus subscriber you gain receives a welcome email. So that's a really useful thing to be able to do. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that shortly. But just for now, I want to talk a bit more about automation and how um, the OFN integrates with MailChimp. So the OFN offers a really good MailChimp integration, which will automatically add your shoppers to your MailChimp mailing list. So it will automatically send them an email that asks them to, them to confirm their subscription after their order. So if someone makes an order on your shop front, then we can create an integration that so then sends them an email asking them to confirm that they want to subscribe to your mailing list. So it's just an automatic thing that can therefore help to like boost your um, the numbers on your mailing list. And also it takes a new customer to being on your mailing list that takes you one step further to having a stronger relationship with that customer. Um, the other thing that the OFN can do is we can create an integration that sends, and this is actually a much better approach, we can also create an integration that sends a personalised email written by you to new shoppers once they order. So that means that rather than it just being an automated email confirming subscription, we can send a really lovely, well-written email that, that you've written to your new shoppers that encourages them to join your mailing list in a more personal way. And this is a really, really great way to get in touch with new shoppers directly and to welcome them to your community. And yeah, so it's, it's kind of just that nice personal touch that, for example, if it's their first time shopping with you, having like a personalized kind of welcome email, please join our email, mailing list. It's like the personal touch for the first interaction creates a really nice start to your kind of customer relationship um, that helps to kind of breed long-term loyalty as well. So it's a, it's, it's a really nice thing to do. And okay, so I'm now gonna go into how to create a welcome automation. So this is just when someone subscribes. So rather than what I was just talking about, which is if someone makes a purchase with you, then we can automate it. So they sent an email asking them to subscribe. This is another way to welcome customers once they have already subscribed. So if one of your customers fills out their details on your landing page, and then they get the confirmation screen, they've joined your email list, then you can set up an automated email via MailChimp to send them their first email, welcoming them to your email list. And I'm just gonna show you how to do this. So let's go back to here. So I'm going to go back to the home page again. And so from here, we go to automations. And then we want to go to email. Okay, so here, we want to go to welcome new subscribers. And here on the single welcome email tab, we can create a campaign name, but we could just keep it as like a like a welcome, welcome email. And then here you want to choose the audience again. So it's again, it's always you only have one audience while you have a free MailChimp account, so it'll always be the same audience. That's an easy choice. And then we click begin. taking a second to load. Cool. So here are the details of the welcome email. So this is the automation here. So new subscribe contact, like, so this welcome email gets sent to new contacts immediately after they join. So you can have it so that they, as soon as they join, they just get sent this email and it'll be in their inbox straight away. You can edit who it's sent from. So I'm just gonna keep this with this one and you can change the subject. Um, this just says thanks for joining us. You can change it to anything you like, um, which I think is quite nice. Thanks for joining us. We think you'll like it here. You can change that to what you want. So here's where you can change the content. So here, if we go to edit design, it's going to take us through to 
a page which looks very similar to the page which we've been working from for the landing page. So I hope this is reassuring in that if it at first looks a bit overwhelming, the more you do it, it, the more these bits will look familiar because every time you edit something, it always looks the same. So, and also here, there's a little bit of a kind of how to if you've just set up. So the reason this looks really funny, I'm just gonna explain here, is that this automatically pulls through your customer's name from the details that they've given on the landing page. So do, don't edit this bit, leave that the same because it's a formula that enables their name to be pulled through automatically. So when the customer sees this, they won't see this weird stuff here. They'll just see, hi Kaylee. So it's a way that um, MailChimp pulls it through. So this is the message that they've left. You can change this to anything you like. Um, it might be nice to do a bit more of a kind of, a bit more of a descriptive welcoming email, like thank you so much by supporting us, you're supporting local food systems. You can, you can talk a bit about what your ethos is, what your vision and mission is, um, some of the core values of your enterprise. It's essentially, think of it as like an introduction and it's like um, saying hello for the first time and just kind of talk a bit about who you are and what you're about and also what you can do for the customer. So for example, you could talk about how amazing your fresh produce is or the amazing range of produce that you have on offer, that kind of thing. So here we want, you could change that as well to your logo. Um, again, I'm gonna show you something here as well that if we click replace, it's always replace um, if you wanna put a new image, then we go back to the same screen for earlier. And I want to show you here that this means that all of the pictures that you upload are stored here, like indefinitely, and you can keep uploading new pictures. So this is actually a really useful feature that you don't have to keep uploading images. You can just have a bank of images on here that you can choose from. And just while we're here, there's some other things on the left that you can add as well. So you can just skip through these, for example. And um, for example, here you could add a Giphy if you wanted, like um, um, depends on the style of what, what you're kind of on the identity of your hub. So sometimes Giphy's might work for you depending on your branding, and some, and, but it's totally up to you. Well, you could just keep it really simple and have a nice picture. Um, so I'm just gonna put here again, the brain, which for some reason is now looking like my logo. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to make that a bit smaller and I'm going to save and close. You might get this message sometimes um, and it, all this means is that you really want to choose web optimized sized images for MailChimp because it, in, if you have a really big image, and I mean big is in the amount, uh, like the actual, not just the size, but also the amount of memory the image takes up on a computer, then it causes really slow loading times. So it's good when you look at these numbers here, that shows you the size of the image in pixels. And you just compare it here, like it's only slightly bigger. So we can probably get away with it here. But it's just good when you're choosing images to try and either save them as a JPEG and resize them so they're a bit smaller if they're huge. So if you're coming up here with like 2000, you'll get this error message and it might be worth shrinking it and it doesn't actually work here sadly it is just something you'd have to think about when you're uploading images um i hope that makes sense if you want any more clarity about that i can explain a bit more in a second so i'm just going to save this for now and i'm going to save and continue and then we click here up here in the corner start sending so this actually doesn't send it to anyone now, but what it does mean is that if someone subscribes to my mailing list, they will get that email automatically. So we can go then, once that's done, we can go back to the home page. So I'm gonna go back to my slides and yeah. So these are a few things that you can do to get started and just look at what your account is doing already and add these things because it's, it, if you've inherited an account, a MailChimp account, 
then like the, the your predecessor might not have set up these things and they are also really good things to have if you want any help around the automation um, with the OFN um, that's something we can help with you can either reach out to me or another member of the team um, and we can help get that set up for you and cool so the next thing I'm going to talk about so this was the welcome automation we just did is growing your audience so you really want to start from somewhere if you've already got an account that's running and has an audience that's great um, if you don't then it's good to think about what email contacts you already have so you can think about do you already store customer contact information anywhere do you have a spreadsheet where you keep track of your customers are they just in your email address in, in your email account have a think about what emails you already have um, and try and put them into a spreadsheet with the name and the email address um, and the other thing you can do is if you want to find a list of all of your previous shoppers with the OFN you can use the customer mailing list report I'm going to send a link later and you'll need to be logged in to access it and that means that you can get a list of everyone that shopped with you along with the emails so what you can then do is cross check that list with any existing email list you already have so you don't accidentally email someone who's already on your list. Um, there are really simple ways to do this, but if your current list is already really long, then that's something that we could maybe help with. Um, so what you want to do then, once you've got your list from the OFN, you can then, as long as this is in a Excel sheet, you can upload these contacts to MailChimp. So I'm just going to go through this a little bit here and I'm going to do this quite quickly because I've realised that time is going on. So if you have access to Excel or if you use Google um, Sheets, either way, these are the formats of um, which MailChimp accepts contact uploads. So if I go to, I'm going to use Google Sheets, but you can do this with Excel as well. So I'm just going to create one here for the purposes of this. And I'm just going to add three, three email contacts, and they're all me. So, um, Katie, Katie, Katie. Um, or maybe I should put kind of Katie one, Katie two, Katie three. So these will be the names of your customers, and here will be the email addresses. So I'm just going to Katie. Oh, got these eight five. Eight. And I'm going to put um, a couple of others, random ones. And okay, .pk. Yeah, kv.pk at gmail.com. So we've got a spreadsheet here. Um, if you're using Google Sheets or if you're using Excel, the only thing you need to do is just file. And if it's Google Sheet, if it's Excel, just file, save it. I'm just going to name this one test. So if it's Excel, save it as a file. If it's Google Sheets, file, download, and save it as a Microsoft Excel sheet. So now I'm going to go back to MailChimp here and I'm going to go to upload audience. So if I go to audience dashboard, and then I can go here and I can scroll down to import contacts. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to put upload file or copy and paste. So actually copy and paste might be easiest for this because you can also, the CSV file is you just download it as a CSV file, which is this one. Sorry, so I saved it as the wrong file, but Excel, you can do the same thing. You just create an Excel file and you save it as a CSV file. And I wouldn't worry too much about what that means. It's just a way that MailChimp can read um, the columns. So here, I'm gonna just copy paste. And, oh, too many dots. Cool. So, copy, copy. And then in here, I'm going to go, choose this one and copy and paste it in. And then you just click it. These are just examples, so ignore them. So I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste. And then it's got the names and the emails and then continue to organize. 
select a sort of status, that means they're subscribed to your mailing list, update existing contacts. Don't worry about that for now. It just means that it stops you from duplicating contacts. So if you've already got contacts in MailChimp and you're uploading more contacts, you can click update. And what it will do, it will add any new information to the contacts that are already there, but maybe it's better just to, as a practice, not to click that if you're just starting. You can also search or create tags to help you remember. So what a tag is, is it helps you remember where these, where these contacts came from. So for here, I'm just gonna tag these as test, but if they're coming from, so for example, if you've, if, if you've gained a list of your customer emails from the OFN, you could put here as a tag, for example, like from OFN. So you know that those are customers from, that, that have been customers from your OFN shop front, as an example. So I'll keep that now and continue to match three contacts. And so the emails, hmm. first name. So you just choose here what it is. So what that means, it doesn't understand what these are and it's because I put a number with the name. So it doesn't recognize that it's a name. So you click on that as if here, we just choose first name, confirm. And now MailChimp recognizes that this is a first name and then finalize import. And then it's imported complete import. Cool. So that means that we now have in our audience, audience dashboard, we now should have four contacts. So if I click here, where the blue number four is, it will give me a list of my four contacts, which are all me um, at this stage, um, but hopefully you'll have more than this. So these are the four contacts. This has my details because I set up the account, and then these are the three new contacts. So now our audience has four contacts, and this is the tag from the OFN, so we know where these have come from. So if you're adding new contacts from different places, then you can add different tags. So it just reminds you of where of where you found them from. Um, also, this can help later on with something called segmenting, which I will talk about in a later session. And so, just to go back here to the next slide, which is, so also with growing your audience, I just wanna bring up another couple of things here. You can also grow your audience in a physical way as well. And it's good to think about different ways you can gain email addresses from your customers or potential customers in all sorts of different spaces. So you could, for example, put a note in your veg boxes or bags with the link to your sign up page so that people can find your page and then sign up to your mailing list. Um, you can also have a sheet where people can write out their name and address and then tick um, with a, you could just copy and paste GDPR preferences, so they just have to tick a box. Then all you need to do is make sure you keep an image of that sheet, take a photo or scan it onto your computer so that you can prove, should you need to, that GDP, GDPR compliance exists. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can do this. Um, you could also ask, like have the, um, so in person that's some ways, you can also have a QR code as well. Um, like maybe you can create a QR code sticker. Um, uh, your collection point that people can scan and then sign up straight away. So there's lots of different ways you can do this. Um, okay, so design your first email. I feel like we've run out of time for this, but designing your first email is very similar. It's a very similar structure to what we were just doing with the landing page and the welcome email. But I will just show you how to find it. So if you go here and you go to create, and then you go create email, and you can choose a campaign name. So I'm just going to call it Start Test and then begin. And once that's loaded, you'll see a very similar screen to what we saw with the landing page. So here, um, this is sending it to all of your subscribed contacts. Um, you can edit recipients here um, from who is sending it. So you add the email address that it's coming from, subject, subject line, content, and this is where you design the email so that will take us through to the editing page that we saw before with the landing page it's very similar and did i was one of the issues was that i think here on edit recipients you can also one of the, i'm just going to show you here what tags can do 
you could send this just to the tag from the offer. So this will then go only go to those customers that are tagged here. So this is a way if you want to import new customers from the OFN into your MailChimp audience, you could send a special email to them that doesn't go to any of the other contacts that you already have. So this is a little bit there. So that's just a really quick run through of some of the most basic things. And I just want to check, I'm going to stop sharing this thing. So let me just stop sharing. Um, Cancel. Sorry, I think I've stopped sharing my screen. Um, do we have any, are there any questions? Is, I feel like I've kind of done a whistle stop tour of lots of different very start up kind of things. Was it, a, did it feel like a bit too much or was that quite a good overview? Uh, well, for me, that was a brilliant start. I don't know if we've got a landing page. I don't, I don't really know anything. So I'm going to go and have, have like a, a rummage through in a minute. Um, and then the, the other thing that I have to do is send out the, the reminder. Is there a way to just send it out every single week? Is that just an automated? Yeah. So that's exactly like what we were doing with the welcome email. You can also do that for an automated order cycle. Right. So I'm just going to share the screen one more time and just, um, so yeah, so it would be going again to automations and then set up an email. And you can have different triggers, but you can also get it so it sends at a certain time every week. So yeah, so this is so this is a way, so this is a start. We could do if you wanted some help with that. I mean you can have a look and see how you get on. Um, and then if you want any help, just drop me a line and I can I can help you with that. Um yeah, the other thing you. I just wanted to show. I've put here, I'm going to share the slides as well in the Marketing Hub group on Facebook. There's a list here of all of the different bits with some extra um, bits for information. So this is like a nice checklist to kind of just to make sure that your account is doing all of these things. Kind of go through these one by one and just double check that everything's sorted. So it's got the automated welcome email here, for example, set your GDPR preferences here, create a landing page here. And yeah, with the automated email, if you have any problems, um, let me know and I can I can help. So yeah, sorry, that's my dog, that's why I muted it. He's snoring really loudly. <laughs> just yeah. wanted to explain that weird noise if we can hear it. Yeah, I can hear, but he's just it's funny, like every time I do a webinar, I see, like I was I just yeah, I've got two dogs. Well at the moment I've just got one, so I was kind of looking after long extended looking after my cousin's dog who is really nervous so it's like just mm -hmm. every time I was doing any kind of webinar or on the meeting it just seemed that there would always be someone that came to the door and there'd just be complete pandemonium of <laughs> shouting dogs and, and he taught my dog like that habit now so even though he's gone now my dog just goes crazy every time there's any yeah. life like yeah <laughs> yeah I think um, dogs don't quite understand like online meetings they probably think we're really strange like why are you talking to a screen <laughs> Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, no, he just came and plonked himself in my lap and started snoring so loudly. I had to turn myself off. Yeah. So. Oh, that's, that's adorable. Dog, dog dreaming is like one of the cutest things ever. The running, yeah. Yeah. With that as well. <laughs> it's fast asleep. Well, but got... no, that, that was really, really helpful. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Yes. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad. And yeah, I kind of was trying to run through as much as possible. Yeah. Um, I missed out more details on maybe more of the kind of like when you're designing this if, if you again i might do a session that's a bit more like into the nitty-gritty of designing a really awesome like email so a bit more yeah. yeah that might come a bit later so if there's anything about mailchimp from this that you would like kind of um, another session on let me know and i can maybe do something a bit more targeted on any specific things I'll probably yeah. do a previous session later on, but maybe give everyone a couple of weeks to to digest this because I'm yeah. going to put this webinar on the marketing hub as well as the slides. So yes, yeah, so give people that didn't make it today a chance to have a look and then go a bit further, maybe into segmenting and, and email campaigns and that kind of stuff. So brilliant! No, that's great. Thank you. I think it's one of those that. When I go back and I get my head around it, I'll probably have more questions then, but that's a fantastic starting point. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for the feedback. So yeah, it's nice to nice yeah. to see you and thanks for coming. And the next session will be on social media strategy. 
Um, so that will be a, a really interesting session and we'll be going kind of literally how to make social media not seem so overwhelming and tried and tested techniques to kind of wrestle it. I always feel like social media is a bit like wrestling alligators. <laughs> it's like, um, but yeah, so maybe we'll see you there. And if not, I'm on the marketing hub if you've got any, any questions in the meantime. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.